Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always, and today we're going to take a look at a very important part of the DCS F-16C Vipers avionics suite. And that, of course, is how to communicate on the radios. You need to be able to talk to the right people at the right times in order to fulfill your mission set, whether you're in a single-player campaign mission, a mission you've built yourself, uh, a multiplayer server, you need some gas from a tanker, and all these different things. This is especially helpful if you're playing on a multiplayer server that uh, deals with using SRS, or simple radio for DCS, as you need to be able to tune your radios to the correct frequencies to get the correct uh, VOIP connections to talk to the right people in multiplayer. So, uh, like I said, this is a very important system because a fighter pilot has to be able to communicate with the right people in order to find targets, find gas, find home base, all these kinds of things that are, of course, very important for obvious reasons. Now, today we're flying with a, another uh, F-16C user, and that would be the Pakistani Air Force. Now, the Pakistani Air Force does not fly the F-16C variant that we have in DCS World, which is, of course, the Block 50 uh, version of the F-16C with the GE F-110 engine in it. And they fly the F-16C Block 52 Plus and F-16D Block 52 Plus with uh, CFTs and all that good jazz on it. Um, they also fly the F-16A uh, Block 15 upgraded to the F-16A MLU standard, which brings it up uh, to par in terms of avionics-wise with the F-16Cs that we know um, from many other users. A lot of European F-16s are also upgraded to this MLU standard, and so it, uh, it is quite common for older F-16C users such as uh, Belgium, Norway, Jordan, Pakistan, many others to upgrade their, their older F-16s to the midlife upgrade standard in order to keep them in service and keep them as potent weapon systems for as long as possible. So the Pakistani Air Force is a very interesting user of the F-16. Um, they first got their F-16As in between 1983 and 1987. These were subject to some importation restrictions and uh, shutdowns from the State Department over the Pakistani nuclear program. Um, and it has created an ongoing controversy that uh, plagued the Clinton administration in the late 1990s with uh, how to repay Pakistan for the F-16s that they bought, which were subsequently embargoed by the State Department over the Pakistani nuclear program. The F-16s in the Pakistani uh, Air Force also have some restrictions placed on them by uh, importation as well as international law and embargoes that uh, the F-16s cannot be used in any way, shape, or form against the Indian Air Force or Armed Forces at all. Um, and this led to a big bit of a controversy in the latest uh, confrontation between Pakistan and India as to whether or not those F-16Cs were used. Now, Pakistan's F-16s are um, taken care of, upgraded, and uh, overhauled by private enterprises uh, based in the United States that uh, go over there and are contracted to help the Pakistani Air Force take care of their F-16s, and a clause in these contracts are if they are used in any aggressive form against the Indian uh, Armed Forces or the State of India, those contracts will be null and void, and so the Pakistani Air Force would no longer get any more support for their F-16s, and that's why that uh, controversy was out there as to whether or not the uh, Pakistani Air Force had used their F-16s against the Indian uh, Air Force in this latest brush-up of the border confrontation between those two countries. So I think it's a very, very interesting uh, geopolitical situation, and uh, as an aviation geek, uh, history nerd, and everything like that, um, it definitely fascinates me. So let's go ahead and hop in the cockpit and get started with uh, radio. So we're just on a very relaxed training mission, just cruising around the early morning uh, down the uh, Omani Peninsula here, down towards Dubai, and our home base at Al Minhad for this exercise that we're doing in the United Arab Emirates. Um, probably had to take a very circuitous route flying all the way around Iran and Afghanistan to get here, but uh, with help from tanker support, we can definitely do that. So let's go ahead and get started with uh, taking a look at the radio system. So we have the DED, or Data Entry Display, that is used in conjunction with our UFC, or Upfront Controller, on the F-16. 
Now, it's not quite as straightforward changing frequencies and using the uh, comm system in the F-16 as it is in the F-18, at least in my uh, opinion. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got here. We're current, we can see we're currently on frequency 305.000 on our ultra high frequency radio and 121.00 on our uh, very high frequency uh, radio. So let's go ahead and scroll through some of our options when it comes to the radio. Um, like I said, we can of course change our frequencies and our preset frequencies at will. So all we need to do is hit say COM1 here and we can type in a different frequency into this uh, uh, window right here. So let's go ahead and pick a frequency from our um, F10 map. So let's take a look at Kassab. That'll be our divert airbase for right now. And we'll take a look at their our ultra high frequency uh, radio. That's 250.00. So let's go ahead and pop in 25000 into our DED window here. We'll go ahead and hit enter. And that brings us back to the home page of the DED, and we can see on our ultra high frequency radio, we now currently have 250.00 on there. So uh, we'll go ahead and contact Kassab using our radio menu. Kassab inbound. And there we go, there's their reply. So we know that works. So why don't we go ahead and abort that inbound, since we are not going to actually land there. And now we'll go ahead and contact another free, uh, another uh, control tower on another frequency. So let's go ahead and talk about how to use preset frequencies with the radio systems in the F-16C. So we'll go over to COM1, and to use the preset channels that are in the jet, you have to first put a preset channel into our, uh, let's call it a scratch pad window here on the DED in the in the very high frequency radio uh, DED page. So let's go ahead and put uh, frequency or preset frequency two and we'll enter that. And now we have the, on our very high frequency radio, the preset channel two. So if you don't know what that preset frequency is uh, for channel two on our radio, whether it's the ultra high frequency or the very high frequency, we can just go into COM2 here we can use our Dabra to select our preset frequency right here. And then we can use the increment button to scroll up to preset two. And we can see 118.25 means that our preset two is slated and ready to go for our diver airfield at Ras Al Kamaya. So why don't we go back to our homepage here. We see VHF is on preset channel two. We'll go ahead and contact them at Ras Al Kamaya inbound. Alrighty, so we're good to go there. So let's go ahead and abort that inbound once again. And so why don't we go ahead and pop a preset frequency that we know is going to be for a tanker into our ultra high frequency radio or our military radio to talk to a tanker. So let's go ahead and go back to COM1, we'll go ahead and pop in uh, preset fr frequency 2 and we'll go back to our radio menu for our ultra high frequency radio or COM1 radio and we'll contact our tanker. Cool. So unlike the F-18, when we have our preset uh, frequency in here, we cannot see what that frequency actually is. We have to go into the COM1 radio menu. We have to use the Dabra to select our preset frequencies. We have to increment up, and we can see 251.000, which is our tanker frequency, is in there for preset channel 2. Now keep in mind that we are seeing a bug here in our system that is showing us that uh, the preset channel is always stays at channel 1 which hopefully that gets fixed in the future, but at the moment that uh, sometimes these guys don't change if you already have a preset channel selected in the menu. And of course we can go ahead and go back to our uh, main, main home menu for the data entry display, and we can actually use the increment button now that we have preset frequencies selected on DED. 
to go ahead and swap through them. So we just need to Dabra up to say our UHF uh, radio here, and we can use the increment button to go up to preset three without going into the COM1 menu. And we can see, of course, preset three is in there, and we're good to go there. Now, I know from our briefing and kneeboard card that preset three is, in fact, the frequency for our home base at Almin Hod Air Base. So let's go ahead and go to the parent menu. I will exit just to make sure we're on the correct COM frequency. Uh, we'll go back to ATC, we'll go to Almin Hod Air Base, and we'll say inbound. All right, cool. That seems to have worked for us. So why don't we go ahead and abort that inbound for now? Abort inbound, resuming mission. And since we're a little bit worried about maybe having some uh, UAE aggressors jump us as on our training mission here, why don't we go ahead and pop on back to our preset frequency that we know is the correct frequency for our AWACS. So we'll just go ahead and use the uh, increment button to go back to preset 1 which should be 305.000 if we want to make sure that that is in fact the correct frequency we can always go to COM1 and we can always Dabra to our preset frequencies and we can go down one and see that yes in fact we are on 305.00 so we can go back to our home page of the DED and we can see we're on U UHF preset number 1 and we'll go ahead and talk to our AWACS and get a uh, picture of what's out there. Alright, cool. We're good to go there. We've got uh, an idea of what's out there around us. Doesn't seem like anything's too close to us, so I think we can go ahead and cruise on home to Almin Hod and make a landing without having to worry about uh, any aggressors in the area or potentially even any Iranian aircraft sneaking down from the north to uh, interrupt our exercises. So also, um, the usually the first preset frequency on the UHF by default is also your flight's frequency. So to talk to your wingman who is hanging out over here. So let's go ahead and talk to the wingman and make sure that uh, that's working for us. Flight, uh, let's say formation, why don't I have him go trail? There he goes. Kind of a cool shot with him flying around. Got very cool Pakistani skin on there. As he comes back into a trail position behind us for our flight down south into Almin Hod. And that's really all she wrote. That is uh, how you use the radios in the F-16C. Um, it can be a little bit confusing. I can totally understand that. It took me a little bit of a, of a while playing with it and trying to figure it out to understand exactly how it works because I'm so used to in the F-18 or the AV-8B being able to scroll through my little uh, comm knob for my preset frequencies and seeing exactly what those presets are at a glance um, in the scratch pad window. So just keep in mind that it just takes a couple extra steps to see what the frequencies are set at for your uh, preset frequencies, and uh, you should be good to go. Um, also keep in mind that uh, you do need to actually set in the COM1 or COM2 uh, menu a preset frequency before you can go back to the um, main screen on the DED page and use the increment button to switch uh, preset COM frequencies. So keep that in mind as well. So thanks guys, I hope you liked the video. I hope it helped you guys out. Uh, whether you're using SRS on the multiplayer server or trying to find gas in a campaign mission or a single mission that you make for yourself or whatever it is, anything in between. So thanks a lot guys, fly safe and give us a like and a subscribe and consider supporting us on Patreon. It really helps keep the channel going. So thanks a lot guys and see you later.